webinar series is one of four, um, and today's is the five considerations for safe flash applications. And why why these why these series of webinars? Extreme lashes have always been known for safety. It's one of the paramount and cornerstones of our business, and it's something that we train and make sure it's trained in every in every class. As I said, this webinar series will focus not only on the client, but over the weeks we'll focus on you and your business. The first focus is on the stylist and we have asked Verley Phillips, who is our master trainer in WA, to join us to tell us more. Verley is an advanced lash stylist. She's owner of the Lash Stylist Salon and an award-winning and published lash artist. Welcome Verley and thanks for joining us today. Good morning. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Um, as you know, our industry is not regulated. So as an educator, I'm hugely passionate about improving lash extension, the lash extension industry as a whole and assisting stylists in accessing quality education and also maintaining high standards in all, in all aspects of the lash extension process. Safety is a top concern and as a lash tech, stylist, artist, whatever you choose to call yourself, you are responsible for the immediate and long-term health of your client's natural lashes. So let's kick off with our first topic in safety, which is to isolate hazard. I'm going to go for the shock factor and show you um, an incident that occurred in 2017. This is the beautiful Maddie. Um, and she unfortunately um, experienced an extremely horrendous um, occurrence that happened um, a couple of years back. What happened to her is she went to a very new lash artist for a set of eyelash extensions and a couple of days later she needed, they needed to have them removed. What the um, lash tech did was apply um, adhesive directly to the client's eyes instead of being remover. Now the problem being here was that the adhesive and the remover looked like exactly the same packaging. The only difference was that the pack on the top was a different colour. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time we've seen an incident of this a critical error occur in WA. Another incident occurred just a few weeks ago, it was very similar. As you can see from the images, uh, despite the hospital's best eff efforts to irrigate um, Maddie's eyes, she actually sustained permanent irreversible damage to her lash line and her vision. She's actually still progressing through with a negligence case um, some two years later. So it's really important that we understand that we are using very strong chemicals in the lash extension application process and we need to understand how we can safely handle those chemicals. We need to minimise the risk to our clients and that is of the utmost importance. We must always dispense chemicals into another container or onto another surface before we apply it to the client. Never ever place chemicals on your client. An example of this would be lashing from the forehead which we've seen quite often. Um, where people put the, a jade stone onto a client's forehead and lash from there. And that's very dangerous for you as the artist, but also for the client. And adhesive rings, I really don't recommend those either. And um, that, can, that can, you know, an accident is just literally waiting to happen. And it's not healthy for yourself. So our golden rule is to always use a hospital model of care, and that is to always dispense liquids away from the client to avoid anything like this from happening. Moving on to our second consideration, we've, we've called it download on the overload. We've all seen it, um, short-term and permanent damage caused by eyelash extensions that are too long or too heavy or both for the natural lashes. Overweighing the natural lashes causes the lash to prematurely shed and each lash has its own blood supply. So with premature lash shedding, if that occurs too frequently, the blood supply can actually be cut off and prevent the lash from growing permanently or the lash can start to grow back thinner and weaker. If a client is demanding um, lengths or weights that are too long or heavy for the natural Lashes. We've all had it. A client comes in and says, you know, I want 13, 14, 15 mil lengths. Um, 
And we know as artists that that's not safe, especially if they can only really carry a 10 or an 11 mil. It's really important that we, as a professional, educate our client on what is safe and practical for their natural lash line. They will have a lot more respect for you if you do that than if you damage their lashes and give them what they want. When a client says to you, oh, I want them really, really long, what this actually means is when they look at themselves in the mirror, they just want to be able to see the underneath of their extensions. And this can just mean the difference from one curl to another. So if you apply a more dramatic curl, they're going to get that visual look. It doesn't have to be extremely long, just making it more of a dramatic curl will give them the illusion of having, more, having a longer lash length. So it's really important that you design and apply a set that meets their expectations, but also falls within the safe boundaries of classic volume or pre-mates. So here are some images that I'm sure we can all relate to. The first image is excessive adhesive, and I see this all too often um, with improper application and, and poor training. Isolation. Isolation is a huge I'm very, very passionate about isolation. In my training, I say to people, if you can't isolate, keep practicing. It's the, it's the actual, actual fundamental rule when doing um, a lash set is to make sure your isolation is 100% clean. Lashes that are too long and heavy will twist and turn the, uh, the natural lash and that can cause it to prematurely shed and also um, overweigh the lash. And then that can cause lash damage in the final see that there's lash breakage um, and gaps in the natural lash line. So your golden rule is you are the stylist, you are the expert, so always practice safe sets. <laughs> Moving on to our third consideration, it's um, the five P's. Prior planning prevents poor performance. In the lash extension industry, we are seeing conditions such as blepharitis and lash mite infestation um, occurring at an alarming rate. And this is really due to improper pre and post lash care. So pre care from the lash artist or tech and then post care from our clients. The um, conditions can be evidenced in, in similar ways. So if there's, you see a yellow tubular buildup at the base of a client's lashes, or if your clients experience red lids that are itchy, scaly and sore, this usually indicates that the, one of these conditions is present. Thorough cleansing processes should be in place using professionally formulated products, and this will help remove residual buildup of natural oils and makeup. And it will also help prevent, um, prevent these conditions from occurring, but it will also give you a really good um, attachment surface for when you're doing your lash extensions and it'll also help to extend your attention. Your clients also need to fully understand aftercare and that cleansing their eyelash extensions on a daily basis using a professionally formulated product will stop and help prevent these, these conditions occurring. So I'm going to show you some images of our beautiful lash night Demodex. Demodex have a lifespan of two to three weeks, which while doesn't seem very long, that's the perfect amount of time between having a full set and a relash appointment for these little mites to wreak havoc on your client's eyes um, if they're not taking correct care of them. These microscopic mites live inside the follicles of our lashes and they come out at night and feast on the debris that remains on the lashes and our lids. It's believed that the crust forms is a result of the claws and jaws scratching and chomping during their midnight feasting as they make their way across your eyelids. Demodex also do not have an anus. So at the end of their life, they decompose. Some people say that they actually explode. Um, and this causes their waste products to be distributed over your um, eyelid and lash line. If you suspect that your client has this issue, it's really important that you refer them to their GP as we are not qualified to diagnose. I've had to push in the past for a GP to take a swab from a client's eyelid and have it tested to confirm my, my suspicions. Um, so do make sure that you do give your clients some images to take to their doctor because chances are they're going to scrub like, that lash line before they go and see their GP. So you need to be able to supply them with the evidence of what's going on. So your golden rule is to prepare your canvas. Great results for you and great results for your clients. 
Moving on to number four is the hidden jewel, the power of the patch. Incorrect placement of patches and tape is one of the leading causes of injury to our clients um, in the eyelash extension industry. Patches come in various shapes and sizes, but also come in various materials also. Some clients can react to gel patches. Some clients who have, um, especially if they have the sensitivity or an allergic, um, or if they're allergic to shellfish, they can actually find gel patches can cause their under eyes to swell, go quite red. So it's really important to carry an alternative, for example, like a disposable silicone patch. Patches can be cut and resized to fit clients' eyes. So it's a really good idea to remove, um, it's also a really good idea to remove the excess gel from the inside of that patch using, um, uh, we use um, little sponges to do that. Um, this is because when moisture comes in contact with that inside of the gel patch, it can swell and that can go into the client's eyes and cause further irritation. Whilst many stylists revert to tape, this is really uncomfortable for the client, especially if it rises up and rubs on the inside of the eye. But also when it comes to removing the tape, it's really quite painful. It's also important to understand that tape is rarely lint free. If you get some um, 3M pore tape and turn it to the side, you'll see that it has like a, a fluffy surface, which is um, lint. Now lint can have an action when it comes into contact with cyanocrylate adhesive, and this causes excessive, excessive fumes to rise up and in the eye as um, cyanacrylate is drawn to moisture we use humidity to cure our adhesive and the eye is the perfect environment for that to happen. So an exothermic reaction is exactly what that is, that's a chemical that causes either heat or light um, and in this example it's actually heat. So reacts with the cotton fibres and heats up and increases the fumes that are released. The fibres on a piece of 3M pore tape applied under the client's eye um, do come into contact with the natural lashes. So when extension is applied to the natural lash, the adhesive can touch on these fibres and release heat and fumes. While it seems like this is a very, very small amount, if you think about how many times that action occurs over the course of a set of eyelash extensions or a relash, it actually builds up to quite a lot more of fumes um, and heat that are applied. And these fumes go up in the client's lids. Now, I actually believe that this is really one of the main causes of clients having so many allergic reactions. We also, um, it's also imperative that once you've applied your gel patches to your client, that you do a visual check by lifting their eyelid to make sure that the patch is below the waterline. If your clients are chatty during their service, periodic check during um, the full set or the relash will um, help you understand whether the uh, patch is moved up into the eye line or not. We also need to check that clients' eyes are fully sealed to prevent any irritation. So using a dental mirror or a small compact mirror is a great way to check this. And there's a few tricks that you can use to help the client's eyes to completely seal. Showing you images here, if you look at the one on the left, you can see that the client's eye is quite red and this is irritated um, from where proper care has been taken to seal her eye during the service. And the one on the right is where a patch has risen up into the eye and caused an abrasion, which is incredibly painful. And if it got if it got worse than this, you can actually do a corneal ulcer, which is um, incredibly painful and difficult to um, heal for the client's eye. So our golden rule um, for this topic is one patch does not be all customised and personalised your patch. Moving on to our fifth and final consideration um, is befriend your client. Um, we are actually going to do a whole webinar on um, uh, consultations with your client. But we are going to touch on them here because it's, it's really, really so important. Um, your client can throw allergic reaction. But the reasons for allergies and reactions or premature lash loss can be identified if in-depth consultations are carried out. You need to build up a full snapshot of your client's lifestyle, their medical history. Um, this includes the medications and supplements that they're taking. 
their diet, their current skincare routine and the products that they use, and also any previous um, issues they've had with eyelash extensions or other beauty treatments. It's also important to carry out some paperwork after your, um, after your client's service. You need to be noting down the products that you've used. So whether that's, so that's your patch, your cleanser, your primer, your adhesive, even the humidity and the temperature during the service, because this can all, all help to identify an irritation or a reaction. Having full and in-depth consultation information also protect, protects you as the stylist. Um, just in, if a client comes back and wants to blame you for a reaction occurring, having this paperwork will protect you. A full-blown allergic reaction is actually very rare. Um, it typically presents a swelling to the entire eye area and will blow up at a, between, uh, well, from itchy straight after the set to 24 hours after the set has been applied. Again, you must direct your client to go and see a GP for a proper diagnosis. You cannot diagnose your clients having an allergic reaction. It's imperative that they see their GP. Depending on the severity, they may need steroids to help control the reaction and bring it down. If, your G, if the GP says that they need to have those lashes removed, you need to understand the how to prevent your client being re-exposed to that same um, allergic reaction. Because once you use a removed cyanocrylate adhesive, it's actually to reignite how it works and that's going to re-expose your client. The best way to do that is to use a barrier. So what I would suggest is using petroleum jelly in a thick layer across your client's eyelid and around their eye area um, before you continue with your removal process. So your golden rule here would be to take more and not less uh, when it comes to your consultations with your clients. So that tops off our five considerations for um, lash safety today. Um, thanks so much for joining us. I'm going to hand you back over to Karen. Thanks, Furley. And thanks for attending, everyone. We do have a few moments for questions, and you can ask questions by raising your hand using the toolbar or use the messenger in the toolbar as well. Um, so we'll take a few moments, and if you have a question, please let us know. Okay, Furley, it does look like we have a question here. So it says, what are the safe guidelines for application? What do you think those are, Verley? So um, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to safe guidelines, we actually train out that we shouldn't extend the natural lash by two mil. Um, and that's their classic. When it comes to volume, you need to have an in-depth um, knowledge of the volumetric calculator. And that also goes for pre-mates. Uh, the problem with the industry at the moment is that a lot of classic trained lash artists are using pre-mades um, and there's obviously no regulations. Pre-mades are, are being churned out at incorrect um, weights and volumes. So you can actually pick up a 0.07 in a 5D. You can actually pick up a 0.10 in a 3D, which are hugely overweighing the natural lashes and it's not the tech's fault. They don't understand uh, volumetric calculation. They believe that these are being produced in order for them to use. They don't realise they're not safe. So understanding those principles um, is of the utmost importance and you do need to get training so you can understand a volumetric calculator, whether that be for handmade Russian volume or using pre -mates. Okay, so weight, weight and length is what we're looking for there, obviously. Not too yes. heavy and not too Yeah, heavy. absolutely. Okay, there is one yeah. more question, and this one's funny. So I've got, that is gross. <laughs> obviously, issue, you know, we're talking about the lash mites here. So that is gross. So why do lash ex people with lash yeah. extensions are more prevalent to, to having that, um, that, uh, that, that yucky stuff? Yeah, so we actually, all of us, both they, they say around um, with every 10th lash, you have a lash mite living in your follicle. And, you know, they, they form, they're, right, they're on us all, you know, they're, they're just part of, of, of us. Um, it's only when they multiply and get out of control. Now, the reason why they are multiplying and getting out of control, especially on people with eyelash extensions, 
is because we have um, we maintain that one mil gap between the lash line um, and the lash extension. Now that little one mil line is a great space for oil buildup. Um, residual makeup. Your clients say, well, I don't really wear that much makeup. It doesn't matter how much or how little makeup they wear, it's still going to build up. And if they've got particularly oily skin as well, they're going to build up a lot of oil, oil residue and it will settle in that space. So those lash mites, if they're not getting cleansed away every day, those little suckers are going to multiply. Exactly. So that's why you need to be able to, um, yeah, nice. They're going to have a nice little munch on your eyes. Um, so yeah, you need to be able to um, retail your clients a professionally formulated product that's antibacterial um, and yeah, get rid of those mites. Okay, I think that's it. I'm just checking to see if there's any more, but that would seem like that's it. Okay, thanks Verley. Um, no, there were a few people that joined late today. So if that was one of you, feel free to get in touch with us. We are looking, um, we've had a few people ask us for an evening session. So make sure you let us know and we can invite you to that one as well. But as I mentioned earlier, today is one of four sessions. Um, our next session is the devil is in the detail, making sure your paperwork is done. And as Verley mentioned today, that is about making sure we're doing proper consultations and keeping the details that we know we need for safe applications going forward. So join us again next week. I believe that's scheduled for, and um, we'll get on to part two. So once again, thank you for attending today. If you do have any questions um, that you think of after this session, feel free to give us a call. Um, the number's there, 1800 987 363. And thank you once again, once again, Verley, and we'll see you all next thank time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.